Hey, good morning. My name is Marcelo Vercelli. I'm the CEO, uh, Chief Engineer at Chameleon Labs. Um, over the last uh, number of years, uh, we've been designing and building um, strictly analog uh, mic preamplifiers, compressors, 500 series products, and we get an awful lot of questions about um, the influence of transformers, the influence of a lot of the passive components that we use inside of our products. I thought I'd spend some time to talk about that and give you some of our ideas relative to why we do certain things the way we do and uh, how they influence the signal chain. And to start with, we're going to talk about input transformers and output transformers, transformers in general, per se. Um, transformers have been around for decades and decades, and it's not a commonly used component, let's say, in, in the wider marketplace. They're, they can be extremely expensive um, and somewhat complex to manufacture. But uh, in our case, um, and it's absolutely part of the fundamental uh, signal chain. Um, and they also, even though they're both transformers, they actually have very different types of um, influence on the signal and the quality of the signal, etc. Input transformers are usually quite small. Uh, here is the, say, the guts of uh, one of our input transformers. As you can see, it's um, quite small in, in, in nature, but also it has to deal with extremely small signals. A normal microphone might be uh, churning out you know, a signal that has 30 millivolts of level, which is very, very, very small amount. So we have to do lots in terms of, uh, uh, have to take great care in terms of being able to, number one, protect that signal as it arrives at the back of the chassis, and also be able to provide some level of gain um, uh, some of our transformers maybe provide 5 or 6 dB of gain over the input signal. Um, the magic, I suppose, in terms of input transformers has a lot to do with these small laminations. And uh, the laminations, the metallurgy associated with the lamination itself, what kind of material did we use? In our case, uh, for the microphone input transformers, we use a 80% nickel. Uh, and then we spend an awful lot of time figuring out how to treat this material once it's been cut into this little shape. Um, the, the formula that we use for annealing the material it comes from a conversation over a cup of coffee I had with a gentleman who used to make them for um, RCA back in, in the Philadelphia area. Um, and he had a very, I had, a very, had lots of questions about transformers when I was younger, uh, simply because there were fewer and fewer people to talk to about why they did things a certain way. And in this case, uh, we were able to come up with uh, some reasoning as to how to heat treat the material, how to let it cool down, what kind of, of environment that this annealing process needed to take, in, uh, take place inside of. Uh, for example, it, and all the oxygen is removed, nitrogen is introduced, and then uh, a cooling process is actually strictly adhered to. Um, so that special sauce, let's say, is something that uh, uh, I tried to um, emulate here. And we get an absolutely very good result. We have one transformer designed for microphones and one transformer designed for line level inputs, which is a much hotter input. Um, at the end of the day, it's placed inside a mu metal can, which is a specific type of material designed to protect uh, from any parasitic noises getting into the transformer assembly. But you also have the wonderful ability that, uh, or the wonderful side effect that this is a magnetic relationship. You know, you have a signal coming out of one coil and magnetically the audio is transferred to the other coil, which means that you, you know, uh, you really protect yourself from um, hums, um, anything that could be in the air, uh, anything that could be in the chassis, in the power supply chain that could actually be introducing noise. The function of the input transformer, microphone or line level, is to give you something that has no noise or extremely low noise and um, is very linear. It's not adding color. It's not adding any sort of effect. It's just designed to be extremely linear, to represent on the secondary side of what actually arrived on the primary side. 